Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. It has been a long time since I shared anything new. I've been so busy with work. Uh, I spent years as a contractor developing Final Cut Pro plugins. And now I've started my own plugin business, so I've just been flat out busy with my first product. It should be available at FX Factory within the next month or so, and I'll share more news about that soon if you're interested in it. Okay, so today, what are we going to do? I just want to show you the best way to create shapes along a path where the shapes will conform to the curvature of the path. So we're just going to make this simple graphic here. So as you see, we've got our, our shape layers and they curve with the, with the contours of the path. So this is great for so many things. Now, there are a couple of tutorials doing this out there for motion, uh, but, you know, in my opinion, they, they instruct the wrong method. The methods used in those tutorials are, take too much time to set up and are really difficult to then change once you've, if you want to change your mind about your structure. So I want to show you the, the simplest, easiest, fastest way to set this up. And it is a method that is so easy to go back and change things around without having to spend time updating uh, multiple, multiple parameters. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm just starting here in a new motion project. It is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. And in this group here, sources, I have two shape layers. This replicator source, it, it is just a very small rectangle shape one on the width, 15 for height, and this rounded rectangle outline here is set to 1200 on the width and 800 on the height. Okay, so these are the two elements we will use to create the replicator that will then drive everything else. From here, I'm going to add a new group. and select the replicator source. You can replicate from this function button up here. Uh, just hit L on your keyboard otherwise. And we want this in the new group. In the shape, choose geometry. Drag in our geometry source, and we can turn that off. In the replicator settings, we're going to crank up the points to create a solid layer there. And choose a line angle. You will see when you replicate shape layers in motion, uh, they will appear to be quite blurry. Use the 3D setting to have a clean, uh, clear image there. Right, so from here, what we want to do is create our segments. Okay, in our replicator, come down to the color mode and choose over pattern. Open up the gradient here. I'm going to choose this stopper and set that to white. The color up here is the one we're going to knock out for transparency. The color down here will be our active color. So I'm going to actually, first of all, make sure this stopper is set to constant. Come down to this stopper set that to constant and this will be the active color the color that we can see so let's set that to uh, let's have, just have a blue okay then grab this stopper and we're going to set the location at 50 percent right from here come to your color repetitions and crank up the volume so the more repetitions you have, the smaller your segments will be. I want for this exercise just about 15, so we get some length to these. All right. Next step, come into your opacity gradient, add a stopper up here, set that to constant, and set the opacity to zero. Come down to the other stopper, set that to constant, now, from here, watch what happens when we move this zero stopper down toward the location of the white. See, we're knocking it out there. We're turning the opacity off. So if I set that right on 
There we go. Now we have uh, transparency in between these blue segments. From here, to animate our replicator, we have the offset parameter. So a positive value will send it clockwise, a negative value anti-clockwise. You can keyframe it, you can add a ramp behavior. For this exercise, let's just add a rate behavior. I'll send it counterclockwise there at minus 15. And there you go. So, I mean, as you can see, this is the, the better way to go about a project like this than an image brush or a dash preset on your image brush. And there's so many applications for this. Right, but from here, we want to go a step further and add some arrows. Okay, let's make another shape layer to use as another source. I'm going to turn on this one here. I'll just turn the replicator off for now. I'm going to duplicate this shape layer and call this one arrow. Uh, let's change the geometry to 20 by 20 and come into the properties. We're just going to scale this up while we work with the points. Come back to geometry and choose convert to points, convert, right. So now I'm just going to hold option down as I find the location for the next point and add that point there. That's gone in the wrong place. I'll just undo and try again. Gone in the wrong place again, undo and try again. Okay, there we go. So, uh, just make sure that this one is set to, there's point 0.3, call it set to 0, right in the center there. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this point and delete, and this point and delete that. Okay, cool. Now I have my triangle shape. Uh, if you don't have one in your library already, just drag that into your library to your favorites. Okay, we can turn that off, but I'm just going to reset the scale first. All right. So now with our replicator, I'm just going to rename this the dash and duplicate it. I'm going to call that arrow. Drag in our new shape layer as the source. Right, so you see the replicator is now populating the arrow. Let's turn the, uh, we'll leave the dash on for now. Actually, we will come back to the dash and we're going to set the anchor point to, we'll come back to the arrow, I mean. We're going to set the anchor point on this shape layer. to the edge. Okay, it's sitting in the middle right now. It's 20 by 20, so we're going to come here and go uh, minus 20, nope, minus 10, there you go. So our anchor point is on the edge now. Cool, we'll turn that off and set the scale back. Okay, back to the replicator now. There's our arrow. And because we set the anchor point in the right location now, if we come to the replicator, to this one, if you want to scale it up, it's not going to push back into the segments. Right, but uh, we don't want that many arrows, right? Well, let's first of all boost the, the size overall. And you can see the arrow is filling into all the segments there. So the arrow has its own uh, opacity gradient. So if we start to pull this right back now, we can single out just one arrow right there. And there we go. So I will leave you with that. You can play around and come up with whatever you want. Thanks for taking the time to check this out. I'll catch you later. Bye.